on JC Direct today. Small caps, are they offering value or are they value trap? FNB brings some new ETNs, NVIDIA, Eli, Lilly, and others. Amazon.coza arrives, structured products and the magic. How does that work? And what about the RAND? It is holding on ahead of the election. This is JC Direct for episode 586 for 9th of May. My name is Simon Brown. Let's start off with that RAND. It is, well, strong's a big word. Rather, let's just say it is holding on. But holding on, it absolutely is doing. Truthfully, since about, what's this, February, so over the last year, 1850 to 19 has been about the range. We've seen some pops up to almost 20, but it certainly has been trading in that range. And what I think we are seeing, because ahead of the elections, it seems to make no sense. But we've seen on the polls, and I know polls are polls, but certainly the ANC seems to have been picking up some momentum. And they typically do. They are an election machine, make no doubt about it. And they seem to be now sitting around the mid 40%, as opposed to the low 40s, or even in some cases, some polls had them in the high 30s. In the mid 40s, what does that mean? Well, they can do a coalition government with a small party or two and get across that 50% nice and easy. In the low 40s or high 30s, they basically got to do a coalition with MK, the EFF, or the DA. Two of those, radical left, and that will spook the market. But the market is saying, this might not be needed. Maybe, look, it might be an ANC DA poll, but it also might be an ANC, what, IFP, and maybe one or two others there. Maybe a Rise in Zanzi or a Build One South Africa, whatever the case may be. Certainly, it is making the rand look a little bit better. We've also got some uh, weakness in the dollar. So let's not completely discount it and say it's all about us. We would love it to be all about us. Uh, but the dollar index, uh, we can see it's picked up a little bit in the last day or three. But the dollar index at this point in time is pretty much holding on, and that is important. If it starts to break higher and take out those 107 levels, well, then we will be going weaker. Make no bones about that. Uh, so structured products, they are these magical things that can, in many cases, give you capital guarantee. In other words, over the term of the product, usually three and a half to five years, you will get your money back, no questions asked. They can also enhance the return for you. So a 30 or 40% return could suddenly be a 50, 60, 80, 90% sort of return. Sounds like magic, but what they're really using are options. Uh, selling calls, buying puts and the like, uh, using bonds to give that guarantee. So it's not actually that much magic, but they're a great part of a portfolio. We've got a power hour with Standard Bank next Thursday, 5.30. We're going to be talking structured products and their magic. We might get a peek at some new ones that Standard Bank will be bringing to market. We're also going to be talking actively managed certificates. And that is 16 May at 5.30, either webcast or come through to the head office, Baker Street and Rosebank, uh, Johannesburg. Uh, we had about, what, 60-odd people last time, and that was fun. It, it, it's, it becomes a group. It becomes a community. I've spoken this before. Lots of conversations. There were snacks and drinks. Loads of fun. And then two weeks after that, day before election, 28th, with Jan Erasmus from One Invest, we're going to be talking all about commodity ETFs and ETNs. JustOneLap.com slash events for more information and booking. So we've just had uh, FNB bring out some more of their ETNs. They've now got about 50 of them in total. What they do is they've picked some indices and they've also picked some uh, US listed stocks. They then put an ETN on it so we can buy it on the JSC in ZARS. They come in two flavors, uh, Compo and Quanto. The Compo means that the impact of the currency is included. Quanto says no currency impact whatsoever. So if the rand's moving stronger, you want the quanto. If it's weakening, you want the combo. And if you, if you say, you know what, I've got them for the long term, well, then take the one with the weaker rand. Uh, this week, they've launched NVIDIA. They've launched Booking Holdings, which is booking.com and some other platforms. Uh, Eli Lilly and Palo Alto Networks. Uh, codes are there. You can find more. Just one lap.com slash ETFs. As I said, they've got other ones which they've launched a whole bunch in late 22, sorry, 2020. 
some indices as well. But, for example, they've got uh, Apple, Netflix, McDonald's, Alphabet, uh, Facebook, which is now Meta, Microsoft, Tesla, Activision, Blizzard, which is now gone because, of course, Microsoft owns it. Adobe, Berkshire, Hathaway, Goldman, PayPal, Visa, etc. These are great products. I really like them. I think they've got a, a great potential in a portfolio. I know what you're saying. Hang on a second. Couldn't I just take my dollars offshore and do that? You absolutely could. But you can also do them local. Unfortunately, ETNs, it means they do not go into a tax-free account. They are only in discretionary accounts, which is not great, but it's not the end of the world. Amazon.coza arrived on our shores on Tuesday. A little bit underwhelming, to be perfectly honest. Uh, There's some products there. I had a look-see. Some of the things I get, uh, Gillette Platinum Blades, Razor Blades, which I get from the U.S. I was excited to not have to pay massive postage. Well, they're just not available in South Africa. A lot of books, gadgets, that sort of stuff. Uh, Yeah, same-day delivery. First delivery is free. Thereafter, I think, free over 500 Rand. It's not a biggie. But it is, you know, day two. So it's an early day here. I mean, short answer is, you know, watch out, take a lot. But take a lot's already got a lot of competition. We've got Shane, or Shine, uh, which launched in, I think, 2020 locally. We've got Timu, which arrived just earlier this year and has been all over my Twitter feed like absolute craziness. So the question is, does this hurt local sort of brick and mortar retailer? And to a degree, yes, I think more in electronics and gadgets, uh, probably to a degree in books, they can just stock a whole lot more. Clothing, look, clothing seems to be fairly hit and miss. Uh, you know, a lot of folks are saying it came and it was just not anything I expected. Some are saying it was brilliant, but there seems to be a lot of miss in that regard. But absolutely it is. Remember, the likes of Mr. Price now owns uh, Yuppie Chef to try and sort of get in on that as well. This is the frontier. And we are, you know, as a country, we do a fair bit online. But our overall retail sales compared to the U.S., where it's closer to 20% of retail sales are online, our own retail is tiny. That's right, online is, is, is the, 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 the digital. The internet sales are absolutely tiny. But I don't know, do we include Checkers 6060 in that? We probably do, which means we're certainly growing. And it does mean that the local folks need to up their game. Some of them do a truly horrendous job. And I mean horrendous like there is absolutely no tomorrow. Some of it is frankly just embarrassing. Anyway, hello, Amazon. So the question I wanted to throw out today was small caps. On the local JSC, are they value or are they value trap? First, let's look at what a a value trap. A value trap is when you've got great looking metrics, dividend yields high, priced books low, PE ratios low, uh, and nothing happens. You buy it and the stock goes sideways, worst it goes down, Uh, earnings might collapse, and I've been caught in one or two of those, and they are a horror story. Values when it's the same story, but you make money out of it. I mean, obviously, right? That's what we're here for. We want to make that cash from these products. The question is value or value trap. Now, also, what is a value trap? How do we make money from an investment? Well, we make it from the price moving higher, of course, but also dividends. For example, I own uh, com- combined motor holdings. I should have checked how long I've had it. I think I've had it now three years. So I've probably clocked in three years of dividend, dividend yield at around 13 or 14%, which means I've made 40-odd percent over the period in total just off dividends. Now, I've got me some hate on dividends because of 20% tax. Check the financial mail of this week. I'll write about that in there. And I've got a little bit of price appreciation, I think maybe 6%. In total. But I've got that dividend coming through. The problem is, is that sometimes it just doesn't work. Sometimes you don't get the dividend. Sometimes you get uh, the value trap and the, the, the earnings collapse, particularly those that look like they're going to be an unbundling success. Uh, transaction capital. I haven't looked at the numbers recently, but from the day before to today, you've now got some we buy car shares, you've got your transaction capital shares. I think you've gone sideways in that environment. So, We've got John Picard from Investec. He runs the Small Cap Fund. He says, post-election, things are going to pop 
15% in our small caps. And that sounds totally lacquer. Question is, is it a pop? Is it sustainable? Does it carry on running? Does it pop and pop back down? Coronation says, hang on, not so fast. Who's going to buy these? And that's the big thing. I'm going to show a list in a moment. And we'll run through that. There are some great stocks here. But who's buying them? Local, small ca- local investors hate the JC. They're all off buying uh, NVIDIA and others in, on, on New York. Fair enough. Uh, asset managers pretty much doing the same. Do we need a change in sentiment? Yes. So we need small cap investors locally to say, this is lacquer. We want a slice of the action. How does that start to happen? Well, we need great results. The lack of load shedding undoubtedly helps. Now, I know we all think this no load shedding is an electioneering trick. And make no mistake, that Eskom is burning diesel. Although April diesel was lower than April 23 diesel, but March diesel bill was higher than March 23 diesel bill. But we've had, I think it's Khaleesi uh, or Madupi, one of them just bought a couple of uh, turbines back on. I think that bought six or 800 megawatts in. We've also got less demand because, well, you know, uh, we're just not a very much growing country. And, and the cooler weather has been helping, uh, although it's quite warm up here in Johannesburg. But ESCOM's a little more efficient when the weather's not too hot. But what we've seen from the minister is him saying, uh, some stage twos over winter. Stage two is not lacquer. But you know what? We've been running stage fours. We've had some stage sixes. This puts some money in. I mean, I use ShopRite all the time. They spend a billion a year on load shedding, on diesel. Okay, so no load shedding, bang, billion to the bottom line. Not quite, right? Because, of course, they've also got to go and buy some now Escom Power rather than diesel. But Escom Power is still cheaper than diesel. Not cheaper than solar, but cheaper than diesel. So what if we start seeing some things happening? You know, what if we start to see better news out of Transnet? We've got that Philippines de- deal for Pier 2 in Durban, in Tequeni. You know, that, that could be a real deal, uh, deal maker. Uh, we've got the new lady, uh, Ms. Williams, because her first name escapes me, uh, as CEO. And she's saying the rail lines are doing a little bit better. Now, let's make no mistake. We're coming off a very low base. It's not easy, hard rather, for those rail lines to work a little bit better. Uh, The coal terminal line was doing what levels last seen in the early 90s. So uh, the the bar is incredibly low. But a few little bit of things happening. Create a little bit of positivity. Could we see local investors coming back to the market? Because that's the first step. And the key thing with these small caps is they're not very liquid which means local investors really can make a little bit of a difference. But the real deal is asset managers, locally and international. So what's going to drive international investors back here? I think more than we, I I don't know how we make that happen. You know, emerging markets are giant. We are a very small part of the MSCI EM indices these days. We are still, remember, junk. We are still, remember, gray listed. But if we start getting some positive uh, upgrades on on our ratings, if we get off the gray list, if we start producing results, there are a lot of ifs in that statement, then foreigners might start looking at us and might start giving us a very small allocation of monies. What about local guys? Well, at some point, local guys hit their their offshore limits, particularly in Reg 28 funds. I think the rumor is that most of them are at or thereabouts, but also returns. If we start seeing more stagnant returns in the U.S., and if we look at the long-term return in the U.S. of around, call it 8%, The last decade has given significantly more than that. Return to the mean means less exciting U.S. returns. And then maybe things start to happen. And if you're thinking, oh, the U.S. is always going to do double digit. First decade of this century, the U.S. did nothing. It went sideways for a decade. Yes, lots of noise in that sideways. But, you know, if you'd woken up on the 1st of Jan 2000 and then come back on the 1st of Jan 2011, or was it 2010, you would have said, I've made no money except for some dividends. So it's not impossible, but it's also not a walk in the park. Let's be clear around that. There's a lot that still needs to happen. But there are some really good little businesses here, and uh, let's run through some of these really little good businesses. So this is Koifin. There's a link in my show notes, uh, and if you click the link, you get, uh, I think, a 10% discount off your first order, and I get a $20 credit to my next order because this is not a cheap package. So I've sorted these on dividend yield. Uh, Marafi, I think the dividend might come down. Frontier Transport, 
31.4 dividend yield. Again, maybe come down. Price to book, 1.2. Uh, volume, 70,000. That's dollars, so 1.4 million. For you and me, that's absolutely fine. A price earnings of 5.5. Combined motor holdings. We had results out from them on Tuesday. Uh, I'm chatting with uh, Jeb McIntosh on my show on Thursday morning. Look, not a brilliant set of results, make no mistake, but not a bad set of numbers. A dividend yield of around 14. And that's what I say. You're getting paid 14% a year in dividends to hold it. PE of 5.2, price to book of 1.6. There is some liquidity there. The problem with the liquidity is it's a wide spread. So you've got to build that position. There's a lot of property here. I am ignoring property. There's e-media coming in. Uh, Lewis. Lewis, which has got lots of liquidity, price to book of 0.5. And remember, they do significant share buybacks. Uh, what's that? Dividend yield of just over 9, uh, PE of around 7. Home choice. I love home choice, but there's just no liquidity there. Theresa pops in. Platinum. Okay, you've got to be brave on that one, but it's there. Caxton, Argent. I mean, these are two really good businesses, and they've both done very well. They're both trading at discount to price to book. They're both trading at dividend yields of around five and a half. They're both trading on PEs, respectively, six for Caxton and just over four for Argent. Uh, sea Harvest, I've long learned to leave away, leave alone the fishing stocks. They just hurt me. Uh, Impact, mm, no thanks. RFG, Robex. I think we got Robex results Monday morning. Uh, what have we got here? Price to book is one. Uh, historic PEs four and a half. Uh, sorry, historic PEs seven and a half. Dividend yield four and a half. Master drilling, great little business, but no one likes them. Uh, Kill, which used to be Carp Agri Group, uh, they're on a dividend yield of four, a PE of seven and change. So the short version here is that value or value trap. Some of these stocks look really good. Some of them are paying some really, really decent uh, 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 dividends at the same time. You're being paid to hold them. They are not risk-free. What is going to lift that price? You need other people to start coming in. That is absolutely the challenge. And we just haven't been seeing that. But is it worth building a little portfolio of them? Mm, you know, to build a portfolio because we say there's value in SA Inc. Small caps, been there, done that. Made some money, lost some money. Absolutely. Uh, another one out there is Colgro, of course. Also results on Monday. We're, another eye hold. But no dividend from Colgro. Which is, so hence it didn't pop up on the list because I sorted by dividend yield. But what we're seeing is that there is some value there. My sense is, and I have done it. So I hold, I hold Colgro. I hold uh, CMH. And they've both done me okay. So Colgro has done very well in terms of price appreciation. Uh, it had a good trading update results Monday. I got in 350. It's now trading around 550. No dividends, but it's done well. There is opportunity. But we can't just sit back and say, well, when everything turns great, they'll lift higher. You still got to find the quality and you got to find a way that it's going to pay you. Is it going to pay you by price appreciation or is it going to pay you from dividend? Either is fine. But one of them has to be paying you. That is the crux. So value or value trap, I think bits of both. And I think it's depending what we're looking at. I think that perhaps more than anything is going to be the important point. But is it worth looking at these stocks? Yeah. Is it tough out there? You bet you it's tough out there. It is killer tough out there. But there is money to be made. And how do we know that? Because the profits, we can see them. There absolutely are profits being made by these companies. And if they've got dividends or rising share prices, I think maybe they're worth a shot. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. And indeed they don't. That's our disclaimer that we throw out. Uh, we're going to end the show there. My name is Simon. We'll be back again next week. Remember those events, Structured Products and the Magic, just one lap.com slash events. We'll chat again next week. Until then, look after yourself. And if you can, look after somebody else as well. Cheers all. Cheers.